<laughs> that would be the last time you press me. We'll be to the camera because we're going to be focusing on our, our guests here. Um, I want to introduce, uh, you all probably know Michael Berto. He's our town administrator. Yep. So he's going to take over from here and talk about our program. Michael? Thanks, Mary. Afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good. 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 Excellent. We are all happy to be here, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Excellent. So we have a program here this, uh, this afternoon that a couple of the representatives from Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority are going to go over with you. And it's really just to educate you a bit about the new North Reading Ring and Ride program. Uh, some of you have followed along in the newspaper and, and know that over the past six months to a year, we've been working on trying to find a solution that would be somewhat like the ride program that's available in so many of our surrounding cities and towns. And uh, with the help of Representative Brad Jones, we were able to identify an option for the great folks in the front here at the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. So um, they'll tell you, I'm sure, a little bit about it, but the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority, which I'm going to call the MVRTA now, is a little shorter. Now, the center of their hub is in Haven, right? That's where your offices are, it's where your bus depot was located. And they expand it as far to the south as the town of Andover. So they're actually right at our border now, servicing the town of Andover. And this is simply an expansion of the service that they offer uh, into the town of North Red. Uh, it's not a fixed route system, which means you aren't going to see buses are going to run on a defined route. It's purely demand-based, which means sort of what the needs are. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just acknowledge the work of the Board of Selectmen to try to advocate for this. And it started back in 2015 when we asked the state for some money to help us in a planning effort. They gave us $5,000 to start an effort to look at this. And the result is a very real, very tangible ring and ride program that will start next Tuesday. So it's a fantastic success. Um, Selectman Michael Frisco, who is the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, is going to be here momentarily. But uh, he was a strong advocate for this and attended a number of meetings to try to advance this to where it's at. Um, so I'll introduce him when he gets here. A couple of kind of clarifying things, and then I'll turn it over to Jamie and Neil, who are here from MVRTA. So this is a program that's available. It's called the Ring and Ride Program. You all have a flyer, which MVRTA has done up in North Reading, uh, gold and green. It looks very nice. Thank you for accommodating that. It's a uh, trans transportation program that is for uh, residents age 60 and older or for disabled veterans. And it's available for medical appointments. So I'm going to stop for a second. Medical appointments only. And the reason that we're starting with the medical appointments only is because we want to start with a program and try to build some interest from the community, uh, start with a program and be successful to, to addressing the need, and also mostly because we can. And the reason is because we have the service available right now still through the van here at the Senior Center that's able to provide transportation. We don't intend to eliminate that, at least not while we're doing the service through the MVRTA in the way that we are now. So. In some ways, this is a bit of a transition um, from, from uh, purely relying on the existing van service towards relying on the MVRTA. But we're going to have both services going at the same time, at least at this point. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce Jamie and Neil, who are here from the MVRTA. Thank you very much. Uh, they're going to do a brief presentation, I believe, and then we'll have an opportunity for a question and answer um, as we go along. And as I said, I may interrupt them when, uh, when Selectman Frisco gets here as well. Mary, did I miss anything? Do you think I hit all the kind of the high points for the moment? No, I think, and we will still, for some people, for now, we'll have transportation available. As you all know, as some of you know, our Christian Community Service provides rides for volunteers, so there'll still be an option to be able to utilize that. But hopefully, this will be the answer to many of our problems. But we will still be able to transport people if needed to other places right now that may not be served. One last thing, because I think it's important: it's the cost. So there is a cost for the program, we put it in the flyer, but there's also a portion of the cost that's going to be paid for by the town. And right now, we, we're, we're able to and intend to pay for it through funds that we're required to pay the MBTA. So each year we pay over $100,000 to the MBTA for services that are not available in North Reading. And I want to, I want to stop because I, I was frustrated when I first learned this too. I said, we don't even get service, why are we paying it? Keep in mind, up until maybe 10 or so years ago, we were paying $400,000 for that amount. It was Gee. Representative Jones who got the number reduced to only $100,000. This, The legislation that was passed uh, in the last session that allows for this to happen allows us to pay <coughs> that money that we pay the MBTA and to instead pay for actual services that we receive from MBRTA, and that is our intention. 
with that, I'll turn it over to Jamie. Thanks very much. Hi guys. Hi. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm Jamie. I'm the director of paratransit operations. So the van. I manage the vans for the MVRTA. Um, yeah. Hi, this is Theo. My name is Theo. I work for the employee of BRTA. I'm the new marketing director. So. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm here. Yeah. 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 Okay. My name is Neo. I'm the new marketing director at the MVRTA. So Neo is coming along with me today to get used to these presentations because eventually you'll see her doing more of them and me doing less. Um, I have a tendency to talk fast, so if you see me talking fast, just kind of wave to me to slow it down. I'm an extremely fast talker and I apologize for that in advance. Um, so a little bit about this, um, the North the North Reading Ring and Ride. This is a new program for us as well as for you guys, so we're really excited to be welcomed into the town and to get this program started. Um, there, I'm going to start off by saying this is a learning process just for us as it is for you guys. So um, we're anticipating some questions and, and some little things in, you know, along the way, and as long as we work together and you, you know, tell us your feedback and give us some information, um, I think the service will be successful because if we don't hear the feedback, then we're not going to know what's going on. Um, so the service, um, like Mike mentioned, is for people who are 60 plus and seniors who are disabled, I mean, and the disabled vets, um, 60 and under. The um, way to apply for the service, it's not like the um, MBTA where you have to go down and, you know, go to the doctors and do all these medical things. You just call us over the phone. Our number is on all these brochures. It's 978-469-6870 um, and we're at option three. Just call us and um, you give us your name. You have to give us a, um, a address that's in North Reading and your age. Um, as well as we'll ask you if there's any mobility devices that you need in an emergency contact. That's it. That's pretty much how you sign up for the service. You just call us and get, and get approved that way. So it's really easy. Um, if you are a veteran that is disabled, that is a little bit different. You are going to need to um, contact your veterans office, your North Running Veterans Office, and you do it that way, um, and then they'll call us, and then they and that would be a younger veteran, under 60. Under 60. If you're over 60 and you're a vet, you just call us, just like you would if, you know, any other 60 plus resident would do. So this is a younger disabled veteran would do it this way. Um, so they just call the Air veterans office and you, you sign up that way. Um, so just to add to that, so Susan Magner, some of you may know in, in, uh, in the um, town hall, she would be the person who will assist a disabled veteran who's under the age of 60 to call in. So if you know of anyone there who might be a, a candidate, if they don't need to call Merrimack Valley, they can call town hall and we'll assist with that. So the service is a curb-to-curb, door-to-door upon request service. Um, it's going to be operating Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It is for medical appointments. Um, the, we got together with the town and they um, gave us all the places that you guys are looking to go. So right now, um, the places that we will be going to would be in town, obviously the North Reading, um, Andover, North Andover, Middleton, Linfield, Wilmington, and Reading. That, um, and that actually, for those towns, that will be a $2 fare. Um, Woburn, Stoneham, Danvers, Peabody, and Wakefield, that will be a $3 fare. Burlington, Winchester, and Melrose, that will be a $4 fare. And then Boston, Bedford, and Jamaica Plain will be a $5 fare. In-town appointments is free. Is that one way or round trip? One way. Yes. Everything when we do our trips, we always base it on a one way. Uh, we always base it one way. So, um, I mean, the pluses is, you know, with Boston, you can't even park in Boston for that cheap. Um, if, if you want, I mean, if, if it's a you count the dental and ice? Yes. Medical? Yes. Yes, we are counting dental that. We wouldn't count going to the pharmacy to pick up your prescription. That's not counted as medical. But any um, doctor's appointments, whether it's eye doctor, um, the dentist, we count that as a medical appointment. No, we can't pick up prescriptions. 
Um, Sorry. As you, as you know, frequently when you go to the doctors, especially in Boston, the, 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 you have an appointment at 2 o'clock and you don't, you're not out until 4.30. Your appointment should take a half hour, but by the time you see the doctor, yeah. do, we, do you call your service after you're finished? Or what, what do you so, yeah, um, yeah, we're going to get to all these things. Yeah. Oh, very good explaining. Oh, okay. So, yeah, 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 I will explain all remember and save your question to later. That would be great. Yes, yes, because so. I, I will address that okay. question as well. Um, so, like I said, it is a curve to curve door to door upon request service. The way it works is um, you can call to book us Monday through Friday between 8 and 4.30. Um, the service is a first come, first serve service. So um, you want to, you can book up two weeks in advance. If you know you have a doctor's office, the sooner you call us the better because once the van is full, we might not be able to um, service, to service you that for that hour or that time or that day. So. The sooner you know your appointment, the better it is to call. Um, we book up to two weeks in advance. It is, um, we do ask, like you were saying, that we do ask that you have the time that you want to be there and the time you need to be picked up. We are aware that Boston, right, Boston doctors aren't always on that schedule, but because it is a first come, first serve, we do need to know an approximate time of when you need to arrive home. Um, if you don't, no, if you book it and say, you know, you, you estimate that it'll be two hours and it ends up being longer than that, we will never leave you stranded. But, you know, the van might leave and then might, because it, it is a shared ride service, so you will be on the van with other people. So it will be going to pick up other people, but as soon as the driver has a free time, they will come back and get you. We don't leave anybody stranded. As long as we know, you still need to ride home. Because some other people, you know, if you don't call us and we don't know where you are, we are going to assume you got a ride from somebody else unless we have gotten the call saying, hey, I still need a ride. Um, you can book between 8 and 4.30 on um, our business days. We are closed 11 holidays, which is in the brochure. Um, I can't tell you that. That's New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Patriot's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas. So there'll be no services those those days, and no service for you guys on the weekends. Um, so a little bit about the service, some of the rules. So it is, like I said, it is a um, call ahead service. You do need to know um, the time that you need to be there and any practical time you need to return at. We request that it's at least an hour between the time you need to be there and the time you need to be picked up at. Once you call us and give us that window, so we'll start, with, you'll call and talk to one of our reservationists. The reservationist will ask you what time is your appointment. Once you give us the appointment time, the reservationist will plug it into a computer system, which will then generate and see if your van is available for that day. And if so, what is the window that they're going to pick you up? They'll give you, the, van, the, the reservationist will give you a 30 minute window where the van can arrive. At that point, they'll give you, for instance, if you have a 9 o'clock appointment, the window might be 8 to 8.30 which means the van will arrive anywhere within that half hour. Um, so we ask you to be on the lookout for the van. Um, it will, it does usually beep when it arrives, um, unless you request no beeping, because you know, you, where you live doesn't you request, it doesn't allow beeping. But usually the van does beep when it arrives. We ask that you can just be in a spot that you can see it or hear it um, for what, when it arrives. You have about five minutes um, for you to for the, the van to come, um, for you to go up to the van before it has to take off. Because it is a shared ride, um, we stay five minutes. Generally, we have some wiggle room, um, but it is, we always tell you, it is a shared ride, so you have to remember that the van is going to be going to its next destination. So if you prolong the van from leaving, you're gonna, you know, that's gonna prolong the next person from being picked up and maybe make everybody late. Um, Let's say you're on the fifth floor of the hospital. How are you going to get to the uh, space where the van is going? That's why, I mean, when you tell us, we'll give you that window so you'll know, you know, that, that the van will be arriving between, you say you'll be done your appointment at 10 o'clock. We will give you a window at that time. It could be 10 to 10.30, 10.05 to 10.35, whatever the window is. So you'll know to be downstairs by that, so that you know to be downstairs by the time yeah, you start your window. It's lay out in such a way that you really can't do that. Like, like Beth Israel, uh, I go down at the main floor, I still can't get to the outside because of the way the automobile uh, garage is set up. Right. So
So, I mean, a lot of those hospitals I know in Boston, um, we do have a spot, the spot we drop you off um, will be the same spot, we'll pick you up. And usually they do allow the vans to go into, like to go up to the doors. The hospitals in Boston, they do, they do this all the time. They have van rides picking up, shear rides picking up all the time. So they will be able to um, figure out where you are, give you time. Yes. Uh, like we said, this is a new program, so yeah. we're going we're gonna to get to know our clients and uh, Yes. Figure, they do it all the time at the Boston Hospital. And we oh, have... No, when you go in the morning and you have a two-hour drive into Boston. Well, yeah. We're going to... They're going to arrange yeah. this. So we just really want to... They, they're going to talk all about this because yeah. they know this because they have a, uh, a rhythm as so, a place. They don't figure out how long it takes to get there, what yes. might be traffic, yes. and they work it out. And our computer system is based off of, like, it, it knows all, like, the TomTom -tom and the GPS, all the GPSs. It, it has... Um, computer system that schedules the van um, is based off of that so it does know like a lot of the traffic patterns because of GPS's and data they get from GPS's so you know it, it, of course we can't control if there's an accident and you know it's backed up because of an accident that we can't control but when it like you know average traffic times it will know and that's how it schedules your appointment around that's why how it will say what your window is based on the average traffic times how long it's going to think it's going to take to get there and who's riding that day. Um, with the question about like the hospitals, about being nervous about not getting your van. So the van will wait about five minutes. At that point, the once the five minutes goes, the driver will call into our dispatch. That they'll say, you, you know, Mr. Smith hasn't come out, it's been five minutes. The dispatcher, 90, probably 9% of the time, if they have a phone number on file for you, will try to call that number. The only, the, you know, the one or two percent that they don't is when there's an accident going on and something major in that they really can't, you know, spend the time to call you. But most of the time, they will call you to see, you know, where you are at that point. So that nervousness that if you're on the fifth floor and you don't see the van or you don't hear the van coming, if you give us, if you have a cell phone and you give us a cell phone, we will try reaching out for you that way and say, you know, Mr. Smith, we are here for your ride. And that's when you say, okay, I don't need it or I'll be down in a minute. And I'm just sorry, give me a minute. And then the dispatcher will tell the driver to wait a couple more minutes. Usually even when we say five minutes and we don't get in touch with you, we're not going to usually say, okay, take off. They usually say, give her give the person two or three more minutes before we take off to make sure, you know, if we can't get in touch with you, make sure nothing's going on. Um, that, I hope that will ease some of your thoughts about the, the, the fifth floor. Um, that we, we, we might end up stranded. As long as you call us, you will never leave, uh, end up stranded. Yes. As long as you call us to let us know you still need a ride, you will never, we will never leave <coughs> you stranded. We will get somebody to go back there. It might not be immediately, but we will get somebody to go back there. Um, you guys, your services from six to six. We are still open until eight o'clock at night um, with other services. So if you call us at four thirty and say, "Hey, I, I haven't gotten my ride. I missed," and we say, "Okay, we were there. We missed it. You know, I still need a ride." We will get somebody there to come get you. Um, if we even can't, we also use we contract with the vendor um, that with other vendors that we can say, all right, can you go and pick up Mr. Smith? And we will let you know this this car will be coming to get you. Um, so do not fear that you'll be stranded because as long as we know you need a ride, we will come and get you. Um, we do, um, like I said, it is a curb to curb, door to door upon request service. So if you let us know that you need um, the driver to go to the door with you, we will do that. The driver is there to lend you an arm. Um, they can't carry bags. They're not going to be carrying grocery bags or anything like that. Um, they're there to lend you an arm or support in that aspect. We do allow PCAs um, to ride for free. So if you do need a PCA, um, just let us know and the PCAs will ride for free. Um, and actually, this service, a guest, just any guest can accompany you for free. So that's a bit the town great right on. I go to I go I go to Burlington Tuesdays, sometimes on the Wednesday. And I have to be there at eight o'clock. Say my wife and I we call until like seven, seven to get there at eight o'clock. The only thing that I need is somebody to walk like you just said. Walk me to the door to get me a wheelchair. 
So the driver yeah. will walk you to the door. He, they cannot go through go the door. Right. Yes, they right. can't go in. Right. I understand. And I, I, when I let the, the nurses know, when I come out, it, it, I go for blood transfusion. And uh, I like, I like the program, what you're talking now. And uh, that's all. That's all. At seven o'clock, I gotta be there early. Or sometimes we have to uh, get there early. So the only thing that we have to do is just call you at the time that you. So we don't do same day changes. So if you're up, you found out the doctor if that day you find out you need to be there a little early. Unfortunately, we don't do same day changes. Um, so you would have need to have called us a couple days, you know, you would have well, need to yeah, call us the day before days. to make sure that it was available. Because this service is, um, the, the service is a first come first serve, you got, um, we're paying, the town is paying for um, one van for, in paying by the hour. That's why, you know, it's, if the van is full, we can't accommodate you, so you, we couldn't make same day changes because the, because somebody else would have, you know, could have used that spot as well. Um, and we don't do it even for any of our other services. We don't do same day services because the schedule is already done the night before, um, and, and your times are already in there, and, and the drivers are already scheduled according to your needs and stuff of that day. Um, so we don't do any same day changes. But you know, as long as you know the changes in in, in advance and the space is available for you, we will try to accommodate that. Are you keeping the van in red in running? No. So. Bad weather. We have to call the call weather you can get from payphone to the West Oh, we will get there for you guys. Yeah, we'll be there. Um, we are mm -hmm. operating. We operate rain, rain sh snow, the sun, anything. I mean, we've operated on hurricanes before. Um, it, it's really very rare that we ever close close services, and it's usually when the governor says, calls for a state, of yeah, a state of emergency. And even then, we still are usually transporting passengers, it's when he completely says, you know, there's a ban on any. You realize some doctors will charge you for a broken appointment. Right. That's so why we don't we don't really cancel. <laughs> we don't ever really cancel service. Usually when our service is canceled, every doctor has called you guys and you've all been canceled. It, it's very rare that we the ten years I've been here, we've canceled twice and it was because of the huge blizzards that we've had that nobody was on the road. So it is very rare that we cancel any of our services. Yep. I have a lot of appointments at Clark Road and a low took three line the medical center right there. And right next to the stadium plaza. And I want to know if you go in that direction. No? Tuxbury? No. Tuxbury Low on that. Took very low, no, that wasn't. I was on your ridership thing. You guys are pretty good. I like blue buses. Okay. Yeah, we can get you to a bus. Of our, I mean, actually no. The fixer does go to low, oh, but, but go, no, our, we'll the van's not. Yeah. How about no. Lawrence? Lawrence is not there. Huh? No. Yeah, no. It, I mean, April? Well, this is the service. The service um, that was created for you guys was based on needs and stuff that they did a report of needs for where you wanted to go to. We got to remember this is also a new service. Um, if you know towns, I'm sure come up and things like that are, come up, it can always be changed, um, like accordingly, accordingly, you know, yes. for those needs. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're starting with a service that's intended to focus on medical appointments in that particular geographic area. And we will continue to have a van available to the senior center that, again, may not do, may not be able to transport for every appointment that we would like. We're not going to be eliminating that service. One of the things that we need from, from you and from the community at large is the feedback about where else there might be demand. We know that there is demand for senior citizens for medical appointments data that indicated that uh, we were committed to providing transportation for disabled veterans as well. Uh, we chose a geographic area that we felt we could responsibly serve within 
um, the resources that we have available right now. But we're going to be continually evaluating this program based on your feedback and the feedback of others to ensure we're addressing the need. And if there's anybody who's in a particular situation and can't find transportation within the parameters of the program or through Mary, I'd encourage you to please contact the town hall. If you're a veteran, please contact the veterans agent. We'll do our best to try to assist with transportation. And we're going to continue, like I said earlier, to use our fish and community service rides whenever possible. Uh, as you know, they have been absolutely wonderful to some of the people who uh, have taken the ride. They've volunteered their time. So we still have some people still on our call list that we can call, that we can hook up a ride. And, you know, most times we're very successful. So until we go further and like we, you know, analyze what's happening now, this is all subject to change eventually, but this is the beginning pilot program. I have a question when my husband goes to his blood transfusions. They test him each week. And some weeks he needs one transfusion and other weeks he needs two, which extends his three hours to six hours. So from what you're saying, he won't be able to get both transfusions that he needs. Well, no. So what I'm saying, if we will never leave him stranded. So if all of a sudden the doctor, you know, you, you weren't there because he needed the second transfusion, as long as you call us, we will um, be able to get him. I mean, if, if his appointment is, you know, past 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, you know, if he's there till 9, 10 o'clock at night, unfortunately, um, we won't be able to pick him up at that point. But um, if he's there and you say, you know, your appointment, if you call us, you make the appointment, you say it's going to be, you know, you want to be picked up or brought there for 8 o'clock and you want to return at 11 and I'll come to find out at 11 that he needs a second transfusion, you've got to give us a call. We will then work him in the schedule um, oh, well, as we can. That, that day, so. But we will never leave somebody stranded. Okay. So we understand, and that's this is our thing. We don't have, you know, we do not. We say no same day changes. So if, if you're at your house and you say no, my appointment got from eight, you know, went from eight to ten, we won't be able to then at that point accommodate now you. This is, but we, we if there is an emergency and you need, he needs a second transfusion, we will not leave him stranded at a hospital where he has no way to get home. Um, we will, you know, do everything in our power to come back and get him as soon as we can. We do have, to, we do ask you to um, be aware of that because it is a shared ride, and we have other people already dependent on appointment times and stuff. It will be when we can go and get him. So it might be 6:30, you know, when everybody's done. But we will not leave you stranded there. He's never there past five. What was that? He's never there past five. Right, but you know, at that point where the van, you know, is already scheduled till that time, it's as soon as the driver has a break in, in their day, that's when they're going to come and get you. So if it is the last appointment of the day, that might be when he, then they, that driver comes and gets you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, a little bit more, we do offer ticket books as well. Um, so that's why when you look at the fare system, you know, it says, so A is, is a zero dollar fare, that is for our, your in-town cost. Um, the zone B, C, D, and E right next to the fares is a, a ticket cost as well because we do have ticket books um, that you can get and purchase um, in our at our office. You can or you can mail in a uh, mail in a check for the tickets. A ten ride book is valued at twenty dollars, and a twenty ride book is valued at forty dollars. Um, so that is also available as well. Um, could be a Christmas gift for people. Could be you know if you want if you don't like, some people don't like carrying cash around and. That's just another option for you guys as well. Does that does that ride be ticket ten ticket book or ten ride ten? The rides are all different prices, so is it? Is it a yeah, ticket, so it's a ten ticket book. So the ticket technically is valued. Um, so each ticket, a ten ride ticket book, would be for a three dollar, two or three dollar value. It's a discount. If your fare is three dollars, we will um, just give one ticket book for that, even though it's valued at you know two dollars. We'll accept the one ticket. Um, so if you have a 10-ride ticket book and you're going to Boston, you will need to get two of those tickets. So. Is this fare a one-way to the doctor and then you pay another fare to come home? Yes, yes, correct. So um, if you're going to and from, if you need the ride to and from Boston, it will be $10. Yes, or four or tickets. So all of our rides are based on, we do it based on one way. 
Um, so you'll need to know, you know, because there are people who just need to ride to the hospital and don't want to ride back or vice versa. So we do it on, we don't do round, we don't, based on a round trip, we do it on one way to trips. So um, you will need to know when you call. Um, we do ask that when you call to book your ride, you need to know the exact address of where you're going to. Our computer system is actually really advanced, but not in a lot of, in some ways, but not in other ways. Like we can't just type in, the reservations booking ride cannot just type in Mass General and, and the hospital will show up. You just need to give us the actual address for Mass General. I know sometimes it's a little bit of pain, but we just say, you know, you're going to have to call the hospitals to get the addresses of where you need to go because um, the reservationists don't have that in their system, um, so they, they can't do that. So we do ask the exact addresses and exact times of when you want to be be there and times of when you want to be picked up. Some people, I know everybody's saying, how am I supposed to know when my doctor's going to be ready? That is the tricky part. I always say, lead, lean on the side of caution. So if you think this, the doctor's going to be an hour and a half, maybe you do go. Just give it a two hour, um, two hour pickup so that way, you know, you don't feel rushed at your doctor's appointment. Um, a lot of these doctors, they have nurses there and people at the front desk that will give us a call if they know you're going to be stuck in, you know, in an appointment and they'll just say, Mrs. Smith isn't going to be ready. Um, and then that's when we say, okay, call us when she's ready. And, this, and then we'll try to get a van as soon as possible. Um, in the brochures, too, we have some things about service disruptions. Um, in, like so late cancellation and a no show um, it looks a little scary but we're very we're pretty good about um, not giving you a late cancellation in, in in a service disruption for no reason so what we call our no shows our no show is if we, dr we go there we wait five minutes we don't hear from you um, in that five minutes and the van takes off that is what we consider a no show um, a late cancellation is this if you call and cancel an hour before the start of your pickup window so if your pickup window is 8.30 to 9 and you call at 8.15, that's when we'll give you a late cancellation. Um, we say we'll give it to you, but you know if you have a valid reason, we are very lenient and our reservationists are the sweetest people and they, you know, they are very, you know, willing to work with you as well. So if you, we understand that if a medical appointment, you know, you usually need to be there. So if you're canceling because you're sick, we're not going to penalize you or if you no show because you're stuck in the doctor's office as long as we know that's why we're not going to penalize you it's for it, we have these policies in place for the people who just decide to call us two minutes before the van's going to arrive because they'd rather go to their friend's house instead um, we just ask that you just let us know what's going on um, and the, then we'll know whether you know the service disruption or not because it is a shared ride and you your late cancellations are going to affect, you know, the person after you. And because this is a um, policy where it's, if the van is full, we can't, you know, take another ride, you, we'd ask that you call us in enough time to cancel your appointments so that, you know, we could have filled a ride by somebody else. And is there any more questions that I might not have gone over? Anybody have any questions? Okay, I think Mary probably needs to answer this question. In the past, uh, I, I, I drive my own car. I have gone to the uh, repair station and it has to stay there for a couple of days. And I have used the service here to pick me up and bring me back home. Is that still going to be offered? You mean if you, you I didn't hear the first part, you were in a... Service station. Okay. She drops it off for her car. Oh! oh yeah. I, I had to drop my car off. Oh, to right come there. home? Oh yeah. If we're, if we're working and our hours are working, absolutely. We will still have in-town transportation. Okay, right so now we do about 25 hours a week. At various times it seems to be working for us, but there are times like today. We would usually, you know, shut up at 2 o'clock, but we know there's going to be people, so we extend so an hour here, an hour there. If we know the certain circumstances, so absolutely. Do we call you here? Yeah, if, you're, here? Yeah, if, you, if you're in town, because that's not a medical right. transportation. If it's not non-medical, you can call us. So we will still take care of that stuff. Because we realize that, you know, you're going to come home from the doctor and you're going to have a prescription. So we can still take you in our van to get your prescription. Yeah. Or, you know, it's still the bank, the barbershop, very last minute. You realize you got to get okay. to the ATM right. or the cat's food. Okay. We're still willing to do that. So we'll still have in-town transportation. And as you know, we're very limited as far as medical transportation. 
know, a few dentists, but as far as medical, you know, this is a wonderful program to offer us because our volunteers that we have been using for this, um, they've been great, but they're getting fewer and fewer. And I'll tell you, there are times that Sherry, God bless her, is like making 10, 12 calls just to get someone a one ride a week from now somewhere. So this is a new program for us. It's a new program for them. Uh, we'll still be doing in-town transportation, and we'll still try, if you can't be serviced, by these folks. We're going to still try to use some of our wonderful volunteers who still want to help to hook you up to other rides. So this is just a sort of an addition to what the yes. Senior Center offers. Um, you had a question. I hate to sound like a downer, but there has been several times, uh, in fact one year it was several times in one year, where my mom has had to cancel a doctor's appointment because when she called the band, they couldn't do it because they were having a party. Are, are you um, I don't, party that would be, be, if we did, I apologize for that. We have services, our services to getting people to medical transportation yeah. and doctor's appointment is always a priority. So if that yeah. happened, mm -hmm. I apologize for that. You know? So but yeah, that, I mean, with us, we're not going to call you. In. Mm -hmm. If you have your ride booked, we're not going to call you and say we're canceling it because well, we're not a priority about a ride this book when she was calling to book a ride. Oh. And, and, and then when she couldn't get a ride, she had to cancel her job. Yeah, well, sometimes, I mean, in, in all fairness, sometimes it may be I'm not happy. having a driver available. Yeah. There are times, we, our drivers work very hard, so there are times that they do take a vacation day. Yeah. Uh, but but I apologize for that. Our priority is always trying to get people to medical yeah, and that's with that's us, what's nice about this program. It, yeah. We supplement those things yeah. that happen. And, and with us, there will always be a driver available for you guys. It's, okay. But that's why I asked. If you know your appointment, call as soon as possible. We, do, we can only book two weeks in advance. Our, it's our computer system won't allow us to book any more than two weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, that, so if you have an appointment two weeks from today, you know, that's when you call and say, right, right away, you know you have an appointment, you call mm -hmm. and book it. Because it is a first come, first serve. We right. will still be on the road. You know, we don't, if a driver calls out, we're not going to call you and say, sorry, if the driver mm -hmm. called out, we have other drivers yeah. that can do that yeah. ride. Mm -hmm. So. It talks about penalties, but it doesn't say what they are. I think it's just suspension of service, right? Yeah, that was the um, the appeal penalties. That was what I was just talking about, the no-show and the late cancellation. Um, the, the disruption penalties with that, so if you do have a no-show and a late cancellation that are legitimate no-shows, you just decided to go, you know, to a party instead of going to the doctors and just didn't show up and we were there. Um, there, we will have, so the, how the penalty works is um, if you have seven or more of these um, no-shows or late ca cancellations um, within a month um, or 20% of your trips booked within a month are no-show or late cancellation, um, you'll get suspended from the service for a week or two weeks. It's never for life. Um, but it's really, like I said, it is actually really hard. So it's not, it's not monetary. It's based on a percentage of how many times you ride and how many like times you know shortly cancel it within that. They don't charge you. No. They just won't come. They just won't come. You know, there's just be a week okay. or two. But especially where your your appointments, this town's appointments, are based on medical appointments, it's going to be really hard for you guys to have a, no, a legitimate no shortly cancellation. We understand, especially where it's based on medical appointments, that if you're sick and you can't go, we understand that, and that's where we'll say, okay, that's fine. You're sick. You can't go. You you know you just got sick 20 minutes before your appointment. We are very understanding when it comes to that. You know, this, this no-show late cancellation po uh, policy is more based on the towns that have it, um, you know, that have shopping and trips and they just don't feel like going shopping that day, you know. You usually don't feel like not going to your medical appointment, so you usually are going. So it's going to be really hard for you to get a no-show late cancellation for that. How familiar is your driver with the area? Like, for example, here, I ride the North Reading uh, shuttle or senior van, and the two people that they have now know this like the back of a book. That, I mean, to me, I want to be honest, our drivers are not 100% familiar with North Reading. Um, we do go into Boston, our drivers do go into Boston, so they, are, they do know that area, um, and as well as Andover North, Andover, which you guys go to. but. They are not 100% with North Reading, but we will. We are looking to get them GPSs and stuff that they can use so that they're not lost. You know, the first couple weeks of your ride. Just add to that. Yeah. This is a perfect example. Uh, by the way, Michael Prisco, one of the selectmen here in town. Perfect example. Of, if you know you live on a street that 
is very difficult to find or doesn't show up on GPS historically, you've heard that. That's the information you can relay to them when you make your reservation. Yeah. By the way, we live in a challenging area where off of this road or off of that road, something that you do know is on the GPS to give them a little guidance and then yeah. they do this for a living and they'll, they'll find you. But they also have your phone number, so if they don't, they're gonna call you. So don't be standing outside uh, waiting but stand by the phone, right? Because they can't find them, I believe. Yeah, so also our vans also have GPSs on it. So our dispatchers can also go at that point and look in to see where the van is. They have Google Maps on their, yeah. on their computer, so they can look in, and they'll try to guide the dispatcher as well to see where you guys are relative. But thank you, Mike, for bringing that up. Another good point is when you are booking that ride, to give us any information that we think would be necessary. So whether it is you're going to a certain hospital, and you don't need to be in the main entrance, you, need, you want to be in the cancer center unit or the emergency set, um, exit or entrance. Give us any information possible so that way the driver can find you when they're um, picking you back up. Because the same driver that drops you off might not always be the same driver that picks you up. So as much detail as information as you get, you can give us is better because that way it will help us from getting lost or from not finding you in a, in a certain hospital. Another scenario is you may have two appointments that same day, mm -hmm. one end of the hospital mm -hmm. and then you may finish the other end of the hospital. Just let them know, you're going to drop me off at this entrance but I'm yes. going to ask to be picked up at this entrance. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. They, they will accommodate and, you as long as you let them know. And, and you don't always have to have the same pickup as you, or the same drop as you do the pickup. So say you're in a hospital in Boston and you're like, I'm going to walk to my other doctor's, you know, yeah. uh, tw 20 feet away, you know, in another yeah. building. We don't have to pick up and drop up at the same entrances either, or exits either, or addresses either. So. I want to add to it. Most of these facilities, the receptionists at the desks are very good. So if you don't have that cell phone number, yep. but you do have their phone number, you can say, can you do me a favor? Can you call this line? And they yes. can communicate. Yes. We get a lot of calls like that from people who may be visiting the health center in Wilmington and the receptionists are calling us to tell us so and so is ready to yeah. be a little bit. So you can always communicate with the receptionists at the hospital. I have one more question. Can you explain to me about the cost? Okay, yep, yeah. so. I'll give you an example. Yep. Yeah. I go to Leahy Hospital in Burlington. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how much it costs and should I buy a book? So Leahy um, in Burlington, Burlington. is going to be, for one way, it'll be $4. Four dollars. If you go there Ooh. and back, it'll be $8. Um, if you buy your ticket book, it won't, there's going to be no, um, no discount at that point because it's the ticket books, a 10 ride ticket book is valued at $20, so each ticket is technically worth $2. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be any discount to you. It's just whether you prefer to carry the cash on you or to carry the tickets. But you can use two tickets yes, for that one, exactly. one way. For that two one more way. tickets for the next way. Yes. Okay. The, um, sometimes the plus the ticket books is we only take cash or tickets. We can't take credit. Our our um, vans don't have that um, option to do a credit card or anything like that, or it doesn't we don't take checks. So that would be, you know, if, if you don't always have to have cash on you, that might be another option for you, the ticket box. Thank you. Yes, you can also combine if you have one ticket and one, and you know, $2, you can combine that as well. Uh, I just want to mention too, if you can't afford it and you don't have the money, we will have um, tickets here. Someone needs a ride, needs to get some tickets. There'll always be tickets from the senior center to be able to give you tickets for a ride. We don't want anyone in town not be able to take advantage of the service because they can't afford it. So we will have tickets here that we can that we will give you, and that will also be true with some of the clients that Sue Bag is working with them or her young and disabled vets. So we want to make sure everyone is not um, not going to the doctors because they can't afford the two dollars to go to whatever. We will have tickets and money here to allow you to do this. The rationale behind the cost, just so you know, is uh, based on the lessons learned from the RTA. If people don't have a little skin in the game, they don't tend to take it as serious. <coughs> We're trying to build a structure, cost structure that was reasonable, but also kept me committed to the program. Uh, it, it really isn't intended to make money uh, off of you. It's really to help supplement the program and to keep you financially committed to the, to the program. But also, any money that we make, Back into the program, so we will have money. We don't touch the money. It goes, but they, it they, goes, they to, goes to them. But they still have. Uh, we have money to. Uh, it's in a kitty, so we maybe provide one or two more rides.
Yeah. That's correct. Out. That's but correct. But you know what I'm saying? It increases what we have. Well, if you contact the um, office of special services, do they send books out to you? Well, you got to um, mail in a, a check for the, the ticket books that you're looking for with an extra $2 for shipping. So we have to do these special patterns because they were getting shredded And we'll, we'll also have some here that you can, we'll, we'll get them yep. here and we'll have them on. If you want to come in and buy tickets for us, we'll be able to do that. We're going to figure out how to do that. Yeah, we just have to go out. And this is brand new. <laughs> brand new. Starting in a couple of days. We're very excited. But we will have tickets if you want to come by in here. And we will also have some tickets available in Becky's office if you want to get them there. Okay. Um, when would you be adding new towns, for example, I might need to go to Medford or Somerville. Let me answer that. Right I'm sorry I'm late, everybody. I apologize. I had a, I had to work this afternoon. Um, you know, the, the thing about this program, it's not perfect. We had to start somewhere. We spent a lot of hours trying to come up with the best starting point, and we're going to grow into this. And based on the surveys and the data we collected, we we picked what you see in here for the towns and the locations. They're going to collect data. We're going to continue to collect data. Mary and her staff are always going to get feedback from you all. If we just find there's one or two towns that continue to have a request for, we can go ahead and add them when the time is right. But so we, we should call in and ask, even though it isn't on the list, if we have an appointment somewhere, it would be worth calling in? To be, no, to no, be no, honest, I no, usually tell, can't. I don't know if you're going to like this, but yeah. I usually say, that's when you'll tell Mary and you'll tell both mics. That that's when you'll give them the request because I can't do it even if you request it. It comes from your town. They're the ones that tell us okay. where to go, what so to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. No, so I will just say this. We don't want to sound so rigid, but to start this program, we're going to ask you to work within these parameters, but continue to let us know. We're gonna get through this for the next three or four months. And then we're gonna probably make some changes. We want to make, actually make sure that there's an interest in this program because if we don't get the calls and we, people aren't using it, then we may not do it anymore. Uh, if you're using it and you like it and we see a, an interest and then we want to expand it, we can do that. Our goal is to expand it. Our goal is to actually hopefully at some point be able to allow you to use this program to go to the mall, to go shopping, to use it to get to your other things that you like to do other than Help. Do you have a criterion that you have to reach in order to decide to expand it? How much, how large does this program have to be before you expand? So, full disclosure, and we talked about this at town meeting. Today, we pay $102,000 to the state of Massachusetts right. for the MBTA. The way this program is going to work, they're going to allow us to use those funds to pay for this program within that $102,000. So let's say at the end of the year, from the services you grab from here, we use $85,000, or make it easy enough, we use $90,000. End of that year, we send $12,000 to the state out of the remaining 102, and they get the rest. Let's say you use the program so much, and now we're, we're getting close to the 100,000. Well, that's my job, and the town administrator's job, and Mary's job, to make sure we're getting the, the, the data from MBRTA, they're going to let us know, hey, your ridership is up, your, burning, your burn rate now is coming close to burning up your $100,000 that you kind of had a lot of for this program. Well, that's my job as a town, as a selectman, to go into our budgets for the following year to say, okay, you know what, this is a very popular program, and we're getting a lot of value, our seniors and our disabled are getting value. I want to go fight the funds that maybe add that 102 and make it 150, maybe 200 someday. Because you're getting value for it. I'm you know, delighted that we're finally getting something back and, on you know, And one of the things I would have said this morning if I was here earlier, I would have said, yeah. I would have started the meeting off by saying, I'm sorry it took so long. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, it's well overdue. It's something that should have been a long, long time ago. Years ago. Right? But we can't change the past, but we can right. certainly learn from it right. and execute forward so, you know, you're, you can now enjoy this service, and, and the, the people behind you, me, you know, I'm very close to being at 60, so I can't wait. I'll be calling. So.
And he's really good at eat our service. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, is our vans are all lift equipment, so you know, they're um, lift equipped vehicles. So if you, you know, they're all wheelchair accessible. And if you need, even if you need the um, the, well, some people don't necessarily need the the ramp for um, the lift for a wheelchair. They might use it because they don't, can't lift their legs up the stairs. We can always deploy. Yeah, yeah we can always deploy the ramp for that. Uh, how about um, my husband uses a walker, but he can't handle it to fold it. Would they? He get help? Yes, they'll help folding and they will help. That. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. How many vans do you have? How many vans do we have? Uh, we have 22 vans or 20 or 23. Yeah. How many other towns are you offering this service? This is a, a service specific for you guys. So we don't offer, we don't have this specific service to, to any other town. Um, but we are in the towns that we're currently servicing right now is um, long list. So if you're ready for it, it's Andover, North Andover, <coughs> Lawrence, Methuen, Haverhill, uh, Merrimack, Salisbury, Amesbury, Newburyport, Newberry, West Newberry, Georgetown, Groveland, Boxford. Did I miss anything else? Yeah, <laughs> I think I covered them all. So we, we do service a large area. Um, we also go into, already currently we've already been going into Boston three days a week for medical appointments for our people in the areas I just explained. Um, we go to Salem, New Hampshire for a, um, for a job type ride that we do. Um, we go to, in the summers, we go to Hampton Beach. So we go all over the place. We go to Lakey PBD already. Um, we go to Lowell to meet up with the LRTA and the Roadrunner there, so. But this program we're dedicating at least one bus, right? Yeah. So you are dedicated um, from six to six, you are dedicated a van from six to six. Which means why it's so one important man. that foot stop about making your appointments as early as you can. Because some of you will be denied when it's full. You only have they can only commit to so many vans because again, it's such a new program we don't want to overcommit because we still gotta pay for it whether you use it or not. So the van, um, depending if I always forget this because it's depending if this wheelchair or not. Um, I think comfortably, it seats like you know six, seven, or eight. Yeah, it's six to eight. eight. We will bring in November. We're going to come and bring our van here so you can see it. It is comfortably a six to eight. I mean, if you squish, it, it will be very squishy to sit. You know, you can't get more in there. When a wheelchair is in, in there, it, it limits it because then we have to fold down the seats. Is that what it looks like? Yes. yes. So we were going to bring it like. today, but we're going to do it in a couple of weeks. Our newsletter's going out, and that goes out to over 2,000 people. So we knew we were going to get, we're going to be doing more informational sessions, and another information session will be bringing the man in, yeah. uh, so you can see it. Um, so we'll have a lot more of these in a couple of weeks. And uh, But yeah, this is what the van looks like. So if you see this van in your town, don't be nervous. This is just us. <laughs> Looks exactly like this. This is it, our newest van, too. Yeah. Yeah, we took a picture of our newest van. Yeah. Yeah. You said it's a dedicated van for North Ready. Will it only be North Ready riders on that van? With you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Most of the time, except like for instance, when you're if somebody has an, there could be a chance when it won't it won't be just dedicated to North okay. Reading if. Like you were saying, you, you were at the doctor's appointment and you, you miss your appointment. We're going to probably send whatever van is in the area at that time. We have a, bus, a van that goes into Boston three days a week for the residents of the towns I was just talking about. Um, so if you know, you're know you in Boston and you miss your appointment and we had to send the van to go pick up and drop off everybody else, they might send, you know, I might just say, okay, to my, one of our drivers, we're already in Boston, go pick up Mr. Smith who lives in North Reading, drop them off before you drop off the people in Lawrence mm -hmm. or wherever. But the, the scenario, I believe, is true. Now, hold me to this, but if you have somebody that is at a doctor's appointment in the city at the hospital, the doctors, and they're going to come here to North Reading, they can call, schedule that appointment for a pickup at the hospital and get delivered to, you know, to a home in North Reading. Wait, I'm sorry, say that again? So if, let's say, they have a family member that's at the doctor's appointment that uh, needs a ride that's 60 um, years or older, 
and they're at a doctor's appointment, let's say Faith Leahy Burlington. Yep. It, it has to be at least one, one part of it has to be at North Reading. Yes, yes. So they could come, go to Leahy, pick up that individual, and drop them off and go home. Absolutely. They have, well, the, that person has to have a North Reading resident. It can't just be, yeah. you know. Okay. Right. Okay, yeah. Right, but, but they I don't mean, have to start off here in North Reading. No, Friday. I don't. You, yeah, yeah, if what Michael was saying, I think if, let's say, I can get a ride, my son's going to drop me off right. at 10 o'clock, I can't get a ride back, I need a ride back at 12, you can call and just ask, to yeah. just take the ride back. Yeah. yeah, it does not, that's why we say it's not yeah. based on a round trip. It's, it's just, it's not round trip. everything is one way. Your daughter or son wants to drop you off in the morning, and then you get a ride back using this service is not a problem. As long as one of your trips touches North Reading, either out or in. And if you're bringing a, um, uh, you know, Kate, you know, maybe a PC person or someone like someone else, like a daughter who's going to come to you, that person doesn't have to be North Reading. But they have to be in North Reading when they get picked up. Yeah. And the other thing is you have to let them know, which is very important, that if you're bringing, you know, your daughter who lives in Somerville with you for whatever reason, you have to let them know. Because those are two seats. Yes. So yeah, you will you will have to let us know you're bringing a guest um, because, like we said, this van is a first come first serve. So if we have the van full and all of a sudden you come in with your daughter, we had no idea they were coming. You might not be able to bring your ride that day, or we can bring you, but your daughter would have to stay back. But if you're making a round trip, it's arranged, pre-arranged all together. Yes, you have to let us know that you want a ride there and a ride back. When you're booking that trip, we say let us know if you want a ride there and a ride back. You can't just call us that day in surprise and say, oh, by the way, I need a ride back. We won't be able to do that. In reference to the ride back, I think you said that after five minutes of wait, they will not wait for you? They will wait. The van will be, arrive and wait for five minutes. At that point, the driver calls the dispatcher and says that Mr. Smith is a no-show. Um, if the driver, if the dispatcher has your information, your cell phone or something, they'll try calling that. Um, if you're at your house, they'll call your house no number. Almost 90% of the time. I can't, like I said, I can't say every time they're going to call you because if there's an accident or something that they're dealing with on a, seri a more serious level, they might not, they might not let the driver sit there, or they might not call you. But usually at that point, they'll say, okay, give the driver, give the passenger two or three minutes. If they don't come out, you know, then you're good, then they'll clear. But if you need a few more minutes, just call in yeah. advance to say, I, know I have whatever the issue is, yes. I need an extra minute. Yeah. As long as you let them know, I call think they're going to not the, not the, uh, you call the number. There's only one number to call. Yeah. That's not the number. Yeah, right. exactly. They dispatch to <coughs> the driver. I have to have a, a, a cell phone. No. No, if you no. tell us, if you t even if you tell us on your way there, like, you know, it takes me 10 minutes. As long as we know that you are coming out, we're going to try to wait for you because then, it, you know, they don't want to have to send a, a driver back an hour or two later. Just ask um, the doctor's office if they're at the doctor's office. Yeah. Call that number for you and let them know I'm running five minutes late or 10 minutes late. Yeah. And then yeah, the dispatch. By two hours. So that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's an hour late. Have the, have the doctor's office call for you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what they're doing. But no, I mean, why we leave is because at that point, if we haven't heard from you, it's been five or six minutes, seven minutes, and we haven't heard from you, we have no way to call you, you to tell us you still need the ride. We're going to think that you got a ride from somebody else. And there are other people that are waiting to yes. be picked up. That's another thing. It is a shared ride, so that you are, yeah. you know, that is the, the next schedule. person. So that person, that driver has already somebody in the queue waiting to be picked up. Yes. If you miss it, that window, it's going to screw up his entire schedule. Yeah. So just be accommodating. That's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. It's... It's not perfect, okay? It's not perfect, but if you work as hard as you can to just follow these rules, and there is one rule that's actually missing again, the penalties part for uh, disputing a penalty. If you do miss an appointment, you have to make big goods for the town ministry and the West. <laughs> <laughs> part of it. It's missing it again. What's your favorite baker? <laughs> Cookies? What, what do you like? Uh, uh, apple pie? Apple pie? Whoopie pie is my favorite. Whoopie pie. Okay. <laughs> you got to make whoopie pie. Is that <laughs> <laughs> I think you folks have to be accommodating too, because some of us can't get from here to there. Right, and that's, and that's what we're yeah. saying. I mean, Just and we'll get to know. We will get to know you. Our um, we once we get to know you too. My dispatchers know. You know, some of our passengers take ten minutes, and they will end up scheduling it in because they see you walking out. I mean, if we see you walking out, we're not going to take off after five minutes. You know, we know it's taking you five minutes. It's 
this is in place for the people who are just going to, if they just don't want the ride, they, they're just not there. So I will tell you, I am now a, uh, a voting member of the board at the MBRTA. Right? I'm a voting member. So um, it's implied, so I'm part of your voice. And one of the things that I've done is I've looked into, you know, what complaints have they received to date? You know, there are not a lot of, they did get complaints, but this is a really well-run program. Their complaints are understandable complaints, but nothing like, geez, there's just, they're just so rigid. They leave, they, you know, there's no accommodation. This is a very accommodation operation. And I think if you, you try to obey by this, it, they're gonna work with you. I do believe it's gonna be successful, and I hope you use it. I do, and I'd love to expand it. Um, I, I think, I'm hoping we spend 102000 I really do. I hope that we have a problem on our hands and we have to come back and ask for even more money. Because it's, it's such a value. There's it's little things in life, right? As you get older, I'm learning. Those little <laughs> things in life now, you're like, oh man, I take it for granted. And now I need things that I never did when I was in my 30s. So, um, and I want to add, I, I met the morning dispatcher. She could be working in any senior center in this area. She knows the people, she knows how long it takes, she knows all the stories, and she's wonderful, uh, she is very elder friendly, and I'm sure we're gonna have a wonderful relationship yeah. with these people. I think you're and the reservationist as well. Chance. Just give it a chance. Yeah. Uh, for Mike and Mary, I will not be using this service because all my doctors are in Medford. So to whom do I report that I would like Medford to have We have two notes for Medford, I think. That yeah. was one, and you're the second. So, yep. by the way, Med Medford is in the watch yeah. list. Okay, okay. No, but I, but I would assume that the Medford will probably fall into that I mean, either D, the D zone or E zone, and we just have to decide yeah. when we can put it there. But let's give it a month or two, and maybe in a month or two, we'll work with Jamie, and we'll work with Joe, and maybe we can add it. And, you know, we'll do and it, feedback and information to be fluid all the time on this. So, and I've even said, I mean, our reservations aren't going to be able, like, if you call and say, I want this. Unfortunately, we have no system in place where we can, the reservations can write your request. But once they ask me, hey, I want to know uh, uh, all the towns that you've dropped and pick people off, I'm sure at that point, if we have nobody going to Winchester, they're going to say, all right, maybe remove Winchester, add this, or maybe, you know, they're going to all these towns, but they might add something else instead if they get a lot of requests. This is new to us. And to you guys, so. And we're trying to de design it so we can try to work with them that hundred two thousand dollars because the town doesn't have a tremendous amount of money. So we don't want to also expand it so much that we burn through hundred two thousand in six months, and then we got to put the program on hold, right? So we're trying to find a balance. But duly noted, we've heard it. I've heard it even uh, before today. Bedford, probably something that we just in our survey we didn't pick up on. Uh, we're really trying to take value for the surveys that you all did, which. Appreciate you doing, by the way. It helped us create this program. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Lakeman, I want to. I want you to take the person that started this. I'm well. He, he, they should give him a medal. <laughs> <laughs> Rep Representative Brad Jones. Brad Jones. Yeah. He, he really worked with us. We brought the idea to him. We went out. Uh, Danielle McKnight, our town planner, myself. We went out. We got a grant money to try to study our transportation, which led us down this road. It was a $5,000 grant. We used it wisely. We went to Brad Jones. We presented to him. He took it from there. He made the right contacts, opened the doors for us. So this is a this is a culmination of a lot of people in town. So it's not just one individual. And I will add, Mary Prenny has been working on something yeah. for years. I'm taking that first ride on that bus. Yes. <laughs> this, like I said, she we has been working on this. Mary has. I've been on the board now. It's my eighth year. Coming up, my eighth year. She has always talked about this being one of her biggest challenges. Every time she's in front of us for our budgets, and we just kind of give her the lip service and we jot our heads up and down like we understand. But it's so nice to be able to look at her and say, finally, here's a tool for you to solve a big problem. <laughs> Any other questions? So I'm just going to add a couple notes. Yeah, no, no, please go right ahead. So, not to be the bureaucrat in the room, but just a friendly reminder for everybody. Again, the service will start uh, next week on Tuesday. You can call beginning on Monday. And the way you should look at it is if you have a medical appointment and you're over age 60, 
If your medical appointment is at one of the communities listed in here, call Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority to schedule your transportation on Monday and moving forward. If you have a medical appointment and it's not in one of the communities in here, contact Mary. We will try our best to get you a ride. Work with Mary. And if they can't get you a ride, they're going to note the community that your appointment is in and we'll begin to track that moving forward. One other thing I want to note too. In the world of government, this has moved at lightning speed. It really has. It really has. We went to Brad Jones' office in March. We had uh, Firm commitment from the MBRTA in May. We got accepted in June, and here we are now. I mean, I've never seen anything happen last year. Yeah, and I was voted on the board, and I've already been to several meetings. So, I mean, this is this is happening quickly. Um, the traditional model would have been to say, let's evaluate it, and in a year we'll start the program. Mr. Frisco and the board were insisting, let's try to get it started right now, and that's why it's available to you beginning next week. So, thank you. We're very excited. I hope you all take, uh, you know, Put your money where your mouth is. You've been complaining for years. So we have it's, something. Please it's not call and utilize the program. It's not going to be perfect. We are going to have bad days. We are going to have a head count problem every once in a while. But you have to be understanding that we're just learning. They're just learning. But as we evolve, we get down the road a couple months, it will get smoother every day. It's just like anything else we do, right? We're going to have little bumps in the road, but if you're understanding, It'll help us. And I want to also state, I, I noticed this too, a lot of people are fearful of complaining and telling us their thoughts. I want you to know you're not going to be penalized by, and that's what a lot of people think, I'm going to be penalized if I complain. We want to know all your concerns, all your thoughts. Call us with it. Let us know what's working, what's not working. You're paying. You, you're, it's a fee for service. You have so an issue with the dispatcher, the right. driver, whoever, call us and let us know. Fee for service. Okay. We will be doing more of these once we get out dates. Your newsletter will be coming out. I am sure the phone's going to be Thank you for the beautiful brochure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, uh, take some, bring it to your friends. Yep. Thank you. 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 Thank you.